Well, hello, YouTube Power Hour Squad. Erica here for another exciting interview for you. So for this episode of the podcast, I had the pleasure of interviewing product formulator and biochemist Kenna, where she talks about her meteoric rise here on YouTube. She went from zero to 210,000 YouTube subscribers in only a few short months. So stay tuned so you can listen in on all the juicy details. Also, we are hosting a special giveaway to celebrate this episode. So my guest for this week, Kenna, does have a product line that she formulated and started when she was only 18 years old. And so we are going to be uh, give a, giving away um, some special prizes. So look in the description of the YouTube video if you're here on YouTube. If you're on listening on the podcast, make sure you come to the video on YouTube for all the details on how to enter. Also, if you have a YouTube channel or you are looking to start a YouTube channel and you're looking for tips and strategies, make sure you check out my free masterclass, which you can find over at ericavira.net forward slash masterclass. It's a free YouTube class in which I have distilled all the information that I've gained from interviewing over 250 amazingly successful women here on YouTube, as well as my experience working with and teaching hundreds of women on their YouTube channels. So head over to ericaviera.net forward slash masterclass to check out the free class. Enjoy the interview. Mwah. Well, hello, Kenna. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, I'm really excited to dive into your brief time here on YouTube and really get into the nitty gritty of all that. But why don't we just get started with you kind of giving us an overview of, first off, like what inspired you to get onto YouTube and your journey on the platform so far? Yeah, for sure. So um, I actually did start YouTube videos about a year ago. Mm -hmm. um, I did it for the purpose of just kind of education on skincare ingredients. Um, I am a cosmetic and skincare formulator and I have a skincare line that I've been manufacturing for a while. So I kind of do know the ins and outs. And so I did start it a while ago, um, just kind of answering a few questions that came up a lot with my consumers. Uh, now those videos didn't really get that much traction and I only had about 30 subscribers, I think, for the first year. Um, and then I made one video that just kind of went viral. So um, I can dive right into that. Yeah, let's want. do it, yeah. Yeah, for sure. So. Um, I made a video about the Jaclyn Hill lipsticks, uh, mm -hmm. you know, that whole scandal. I've actually been a Jaclyn Hill fan, like, since she was first on YouTube. Um, kind of the main ones that I watched to learn how to do my makeup when I was a teenager. Mm -hmm. So when she came out with a lipstick line, I was pretty excited. Um, wanted to support someone that I had been watching for a long time. And so I purchased the products and then... In the time in between me receiving them, there was just a lot um, of videos going viral about you know people finding stuff in their lipsticks. And because I do have that background in cosmetic makeup manufacturing, I was just pretty interested. I mean, anytime there is any kind of scandal related to quality control in this industry, it does catch um, people like that have my experience, it catches our attention mm -hmm. because um, it just doesn't actually happen as often as you might think. And so I was pretty except interested. For, I thought except for I would... with Jaclyn Hill. <laughs> it seems to happen to her all the time. <laughs> that, is, that is kind of true, yeah. So I just thought I would film myself opening up the lipsticks on camera. I really didn't think too much of it. You know, I filmed it in my parents' bathroom. I was wearing pajamas. Yeah, and then I just I'll uploaded it. it. And it quickly, yeah, so my nice pajama top there. <laughs> okay, so you're like in your parents' room in your pajamas. And then... Yeah, and so I was just opening up the lipsticks for the first time, thought I'd film my reaction mm -hmm. and kind of also give my two cents on the information that she had provided to the consumers regarding the quality issues. Um, so my video kind of just talked about, you know, why things like white fuzzy gloves, um, it doesn't really make sense for the contamination that was present. And I also did go over a few different quality control measures that are used in cosmetic manufacturing. Um, and people were pretty interested in that side of things, which was a lot of the feedback that I got initially. Mm -hmm. I mean, the video did take off more than I ever thought it would. I was yeah. kind of, to be totally honest, I was a little freaked out because I didn't expect that many eyes to be on that video. Mm -hmm. You know, there is a few things that I say that I would change now if I had known it was going to go viral. Like um, what? Just some, 
uh, I said, I think I said like nasty lipsticks or something, you know, I just mm. used language that had mm. a bit too much emotion in it for what I would like to put out there on the internet. So, mm. you know, lesson learned for sure. Yeah. Um, but from there, I actually just started making, because people were so interested in that manufacturing side, and I did see it as a kind of hole in the beauty um, YouTube space as far as providing customers education on what goes into product manufacturing, what goes into quality, you know, how to supply um, the supply side work and everything that goes into it. So I just started making a couple more videos based on, you know, how are cosmetics regulated in the US and Canada and um, what are the quality control measures that have to go into cosmetics and those also did really well and then people just started asking me more questions. Um, so for about two months, I was kind of spotty with it because to be totally honest, it was like it was a little bit overwhelming, especially mm -hmm. when I didn't come onto the platform to try and make it a career or try and make money off of it. I really came on just to provide um, some like behind the curtains look into the industry. And um, so I kind of, you know, was only posting about, you know, once every two weeks. I would miss like maybe three weeks for a good time chunk of the summer and I did see my you know subscriber count that I gained really quickly start to decline and I you know put some thought into it and decided that it is something that I am you know really interested in doing very passionate about the topics and people just keep asking me such incredible questions that it was really easy to create videos because I honestly didn't have to come up with the content I was just answering questions that people were asking me um, so I thought that was really interesting. And so in, in about September, I started really kind of ramping up how much I was posting, started posting five times a week. Five and times? Oh, wow. Five times a week, yeah. So, But the great thing is, is, you know, I'm not constantly chasing ideas to create content because I've just listened to my subscribers and to my followers. Um, and the other really interesting thing about my journey is my subscribers and followers have kind of helped me get better at the tech aspect as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I first started on YouTube, I was just filming on my iPhone with like the front facing camera, no lights, you know, and then they were like, you know, you should maybe upgrade your camera and audio, maybe try an intro, mm -hmm. add text on screen. So they gave yeah. me all the tips that really make videos that mm -hmm. I know that I watch, you know, have that kind of added value. So that was something that I started to incorporate as well. And I think, um, you know, doing those little things to make a video more complete really helped as well. But um, yeah, that consistency as well has been really great. So now I'm over 200,000, um, which is really cool. And yeah. the questions just keep coming and so many interesting topics to cover. So I'm excited to just kind of keep going uh, with this journey on YouTube. But I am still, yeah, I'm still really new. So every little thing is, um, you know, a learning curve and experience right down to learning to format your camera before you record a video so the files aren't messed up. Like I'm just, I'm new at everything, right? So it's been a huge learning curve, but it's been really fun, especially with such a great um, group of people that are so passionate and interested about both beauty mm -hmm. and science. Uh, one of the coolest things has been, you know, young, young women reaching out that are either thinking about going into a, yeah. like a science program or they're in a science program and they want to figure out how to go into the cosmetic world for a career. It's been really cool to, you know, have DMs with them and talk to them about what they can do in university, how they can get involved and how that can really accelerate their, their growth forward. So for me, that's been probably the coolest part is uh, being connected to other women that are passionate about science and kind of all working together to figure out how to make it a career. Yeah, it's so cool. So um, a few things I want to go back on that, that you talked about, but so what, what is your exact like title? What would you say? What did you get your degree in? I'm curious about that also. Yeah, so I've got a degree in biochemistry. Mm -hmm. I got it at the University of Guelph. Mm -hmm. um, I had a little bit of a different university experience than most, I would say. I started volunteering in a lab in my first year, and I also started a skincare company in my first year as well. So How right old were you when you started the skincare company? Um, I was 18. Oh, wow. So you had the skincare, and how old are you now? I'm 23. Yeah, so you've, you've had a skincare company for quite some time. Yeah, I mean, the reason why I actually started it is mm -hmm. because in university, um, all my new university friends saw all these unlabeled vials and jars 
just on my counter because I had made my own skincare products basically my whole life since I was 14. And they were like, what's going on here? How can we get involved in this? And so I kind of looked at them and looked at the products and I said, yeah, maybe this is something that I could do as a business. So when I first started my company, it was um, one-on-one consultations for skincare, mostly around the basis of aromatherapy, but I would design uh, specific regimes for each client that I had based on whatever they wanted to target and treat. And then from there, I did find that I was making a lot of the same types of products. So Mm -hmm. I developed it into a product line over about a year. um, And it continued on with that product line for another year. Um, But I always did research in university for my skincare line. I always wanted them to be blended together. So that's why I got involved in labs and started doing uh, bio like secondary metabolite biochemistry research really early on. So that's basically looking at things like the active ingredients in skincare that we get from plants, you know, the antioxidants from like red wine and grapes, um, things like that. So basically from the beginning, I had both worlds really meshed together. And then um, in the later half of my degree, I actually went and did research at the University of British Columbia for a co-op semester. I was researching under the Natural, um, Natural Products Canada Research Chair And she just told me, she taught me just a wealth of knowledge around natural products and actually introduced me to um, a kind of new opportunity for skincare, which was from a plant called breadfruit. So I researched that. And um, yeah, I mean, I went pretty hardcore into the whole science side of things. So filed patents, you know, got um, grants from the government to start the business. And then from there, I started. overseeing master's student projects on sustainable skincare ingredient development from Canadian waste products. So when I was in my third year university, I was supervising master's students projects. So I was always very research focused. Mm -hmm. Um, And then near the end of my degree, I actually got a job working for a natural health product company. Um, you know, my last day of school was my first day of full-time work. And with that company, I manage all of the raw materials and finished consumer goods for all of their brands internationally. So, you know, managing both the production, but the quality, um, and, you know, all the way to delivering to the retailers that they exist in. So it's just kind of been my world for a really long time. Um, but yeah, my background is in biochemistry. I don't have any business degrees, but I've taken a lot of business uh, uh, classes and courses along the way and been in a lot of mentorship programs uh, regarding both the science side and then also the business side as well. So that's kind of um, my background there. I would say also owning a business by, at the age of 18 to now also qualifies you as, you know, having business knowledge <laughs> as well. <laughs> I've learned a lot along the way, that's for sure. Yeah, and so do you, so you still work for that company now, the one that you worked at when you graduated? Are you doing the same yeah, thing? Yeah, so I mean, interesting enough, I actually did, I decided to sell my skincare line to the natural health product company that I work for so oh. that everything is under one umbrella. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm not the owner of my the skincare line that I uh, developed um, in 2017, but I am still the COO. I still, um, you know, am also the face of the brand, but I manage every kind of technical aspect of that. But uh, because I was managing so many different lines in the same way, it kind of made sense to bring it under that wing and manage them all with, with the same resources instead of having, you know, outside accounting and production and having everything mm-hmm. separate. It was just easier to bring things under the same uh, kind of umbrella. Mm, yeah. That's very yeah. cool. That's so interesting. So then, okay, let's talk about this Jaclyn Hill video. So then you uploaded it. And then what happened after? And oh, let's let's talk about the timeline too, because I know I see here like Jaclyn Hill. I believe she released her lipsticks on May thirtieth, and then you uploaded your video June fifteenth. Was this after her apology? Not apology, but yeah. her explanation video, where she yeah. talked about the the gloves and all that. Was it was that right after that? It was pretty close. Yeah, it was some very close to it, but it was definitely in between. So essentially, I was actually traveling for those two weeks. Mm. Um, I live in Canada, and I was traveling in the Caribbean, and then I was stopping in to see my dad in the U.S. on the way back, so I actually ordered the lipsticks to his house. Oh, okay. So they got there, you know, probably a week before I did. Um, mm-hmm. I think, you know, they came super quick, but I didn't get there for a while, so all it allowed for all this stuff to kind of develop, right? Yeah. You know, tons of people making videos, and then, and then she coming, like, she came forward with a couple of those videos, um, and 
that is really the commentary that I was commenting on in my video. It was mm -hmm. kind of a response, both opening the lipsticks up, but then also kind of uh, commenting on the things that she said and how, you know, for someone that's been in this industry and has seen these production floors and understands how it works, what she said just didn't really match up for me and wasn't a sound reason of what was going on. Um, yeah, so that's kind of what that was all about. But definitely her apology video was before because I definitely remember the, the white fuzzy glove thing. <laughs> yeah, when, when I watched yeah. your... I, I wasn't really familiar with you, your channel until I had actually several people ask me, like, you need to get her on. She's blowing up and blah, blah, blah. So then when I was reviewing your channel and I watched that video, I was like, oh, wow. Like, you you didn't hold back. You are like, um, yeah, no. Like, people don't wear gloves. Like, you were very, like, and I think people appreciated that. You weren't, like, tiptoeing around. You were kind of just like, no, this is what I do for a living, and this is what I do on a day-to-day -day basis, and this does not make any sense what she's saying. Yeah, it was uh, definitely a very kind of upfront approach. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's, that is probably partially why the video did well. Also, for some reason, everyone thinks I look like Shailene Woodley. Yes, and, you um, do. So a lot of people, I think, honestly click on my videos because they, they think it's, it's like Shailene really Woodley reviewing something. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Which I find hilarious, but yeah, that's uh, honestly probably one of my top comments is you look like Shailene Woodley. Yeah, because I literally just finished watching, um, I was on HBO. Oh, I can't even remember. It was, it, was, it was a show, the second season. How do I forget? Do you know what I'm talking about, the show that she's on? Um, oh, yeah, what is the name of it? Um, Nicole Kidman, Reese Witherspoon. I even read the book. How can I not even remember the name of it? Anyways, <laughs> I, for you guys listening and watching, you probably know what I'm talking about if you watched it. I literally just got finished watching that season. And then I think like a few days later, I was like, I watched your videos. I'm like, she looks just like the, <laughs> the actress. Like, like that. I was like, she looks just like her. So that's funny because I thought the same thing. Um, anyways, <laughs> so... Um, Okay, so then what, what was going inside your head? Because from what it looks like when I'm looking at, and you and I, before we pushed record, I showed you your social blade. And you're like, mm -hmm. you're like yeah, what is that? That's interesting. So yeah. um, it, it looks like, um, and for those of you listening, you can head on over to YouTube to kind of see the chart here. But it looked like you grew... 138,000 subscribers. You uploaded the video on June 15th and on Hero and Social Blade, it says yeah. on June 24th, which is, I don't know, like 10 days later, nine days later, you're at 138,000 subscribers. Yeah, so, so that, was, that was a quick jump. <laughs> yeah, so what was going through your mind? Like, take me back to you uploading that video. Just take, take us back there. So right, I mean, right after the upload, I, it did get traction right away. So from okay. kind of out of the gates, I was um, pretty stunned at how many people were watching this video um, because it just kind of blew up right from the beginning. Um, but then, yeah, the, the follower thing was interesting because, you know, you see a lot of viral videos when and then someone has like 100 followers because mm -hmm. it's not content that you're going to go back there for, right? Um, so I... I was pretty shocked at how many people were actually hitting subscribe with just having that one video on there. Um, so it did. I did want to make some more videos, especially relating to the specific topic of quality and you know how things are regulated. Um, you know, Health Canada, the FDA, those kinds mm -hmm. of topics, because it seemed. I kind of thought, assumed that's why people were there, um, and then I quickly also found out that people had a lot of other questions. So. I mean, the mindset I was in was just kind of like, okay, I guess we'll see where this goes. Um, I don't think that I really did take it seriously until I gained, um, you know, that kind of over 100,000 following because I just kind of figured, okay, well, they're here for that one video. I did say I was going to do a part two. Once I post the part two, you know, I'm going to lose everyone. Mm. So that's kind of the mindset that I had oh, and I was okay. prepared for that. Yeah. I didn't think that it was really going to be a sustained thing. So I made a few videos in between, but I really didn't take it seriously. And then I did post that part two, but things didn't decline. And people kept asking questions and wanting more videos. So I just kind of chipped away at it. Um, I was traveling a lot over the summer. I was pretty busy, so it mm -hmm. was hard to kind of sit down just with myself and figure out what I wanted to do with the channel, the direction that I wanted to go in, you know, the, the style of delivery that I wanted to have, which is still something that I'm trying to figure out because yeah, I'm so new. It's still new um, yeah. So, you know, each video is a little bit different because I'm just trying to figure out my style.
But yeah, I mean, as you can see, the beginning videos, they are mm-hmm. front facing iPhone camera videos. Like, like, do you even use, did, like for this one, this Jacqueline, cut, like the one that went viral, did you even use a custom thumbnail or did you did YouTube pick that still? No, YouTube picked all my thumbnails <laughs> for like a couple months there. <laughs> I know. I was like, all just like YouTube like shots. Like this one, yeah. the thank you science babe. I was like, that's actually her thumbnail of her eyes closed. <laughs> Yep, that is it. With 111,000 views. Because I was like, I bet you she didn't even upload a a custom thumbnail like that. Like, YouTube picked that. No. That's insane. Yeah, but you'll you'll see the ones from a year ago, right? I actually put a little bit more effort into those. Yeah. So this was just, honestly, I didn't think anything. And they look like they have a lot of views now. But when this Jaclyn Hill thing went went viral, they had like 50 views. Like, they had nothing. So they look like they're decent now. Yeah. (laughs) No, I I, I was going to ask you because that's what I've seen too. Is like when people go viral, what happens is that, and in a way, it was probably like a good thing that you had like these three videos up there because. I mean, I think it's twofold. I I did think that. I thought it was interesting that, oh, she has a part two. Like, I'm wondering if that's part of the reason why so many people did subscribe. Mm-hmm. But maybe in the meantime, they're like, oh, I'll check her out. And they saw your other videos. And then you did put some videos in between that obviously didn't do as well, but people watched them. Yeah. And then your part two came out. And then, you know, that was a million. Was this also a still from YouTube? Yep, this yeah. Is still from the video. Yeah. <laughs> Not in no custom <laughs> thumbnail. <laughs> Just um, and this was almost a million views. Uh, and then at this point you said, Oh, were you so you were expecting people to drop. You were expecting like, okay, part two is over, I'm done. Mm-hmm. We're gonna see the the drop in subscribers. So then what happened? Um, yeah, so I mean, I didn't lose that many people, mm-hmm. and I mean, if anything, it kept growing. So I decided to take it a little bit more seriously and try and plan out some content over the next while. Um, but because I was kind of in this traveling transition period, it was hard to, you know, think about getting new equipment. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, really making a good background or space or anything because I was constantly just in like different hotel rooms and different places and everything. And then also trying to decide like how much of my life I want to be online like I think that when you have this slow gradual progression you just slowly get comfortable with sharing your life online Mm -hmm. versus when it's all of a sudden like it it honestly is it kind of freaks you out I mean all of a sudden you now have like a million eyes on you and the judgment of everyone and you know everyone's powerful behind the screen and everything and not only that but just even just thinking about like okay well you can't mention names you can't like there's just so many aspects of what's available online that I just started to think a lot about so I kind of I did kind of step back from the platform for a bit just to figure out what I wanted to do with it and um, what things were going to look like moving forward and just kind of also getting comfortable with the fact of like posting Um, I mean I didn't even really post on Instagram before I didn't really use stories that much I did a little bit, you know, showing kind of um, my brand and things like that, but not not to the extent that I do now. So I slowly started to kind of build that up, build that confidence with just being on camera. I did a couple of lives, which kind of, you know, that whole idea freaked me out uh, to start. But then once I did it, I was like, OK, I guess this is OK. It's, yeah. it's fast paced, but it's, it's interesting. So just kind of slowly getting myself used to what, um, you know, I see other YouTubers and influencers using to connect with their with, um, you know, with their crew and everything. So as I started to introduce more of those practices, I think Instagram did really help because the people that I had uh, that came to my Instagram, I knew, okay, they're really here for me. They're interested in what I have to say versus YouTube can sometimes just be, it is that, but it can also be a huge spectrum, you Mm -hmm. know, of people that are just on your video to tell you how bad their day was or whatever. (laughs) So I knew that Instagram was a place that I could kind of start to get more comfortable with um, in the beginning. And then once I did, feel more comfortable, you know, being on camera, um, just kind of talking to people, um, even in DMs and stuff, and just getting more used to the idea of like, okay, people are coming to me for advice, people are coming to me for expertise or for whatever, um, and even just kind of accepting that as a role um, was interesting as well. I mean, it's something that I've always, you know, I, I train employees on this stuff, but it, it's different to give public information and public advice and public, yeah. you know, um, sharing all that knowledge and stuff. So it, it is, it feels a little bit different. So it was kind of an adjustment period. Um, but then I'd say, yeah, like in the past 
month, month and a half, I've really kind of picked it up and just accepted that this is something that I am, that I want to do and that I'm, and that I'm doing. So just go all in. And yes, yeah, so it's been, it's actually been more fun since kind of allowing myself that freedom to just kind of go into this world and, um, uh, really connect with people in every way possible and share things more than just, you know, beauty and science, but other aspects of my life. Like I'm really passionate about, you know, environmental causes and um, social causes. So I like to share that as well. And so it's been interesting to get feedback on kind of the other aspects that make me a person, not just like the information that I'm spewing. So yeah, yeah it's just been an, it's been an interesting process just because it did come on so quick. So for me, it's been, you know, taking baby steps to kind of grow to where my growth has come because I I don't think that I was really ready for that yeah um, yeah it's like you almost have to mentally catch up to like the growth because some people have been working yeah. you know maybe it's a couple years a year three years and they they finally hit that hundred thousand even four years you know longer and they finally hit that you know silver play button the hundred thousand subscribers and like you said they've kind of like acclimated to this environment over time you know mm -hmm. you know at ten thousand subscribers and then at 50 and then at 75 and it like as those benchmarks happen then different things probably end up coming about you deal with them and then you you figure it out and then move on but for you it's like boom all at once so like everything yeah. right like figuring out oh my gosh I shouldn't have said that or oh my gosh all these comments or managing the the engagement all that stuff so yeah that was probably probably pretty crazy so when I when I was looking at your videos though it did look like you had a like very 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 positive comments like people seem to really love you in the comments did you get any negativity did you get any hate did you get any people questioning you your authority who you are any of that stuff um yeah I mean I definitely have the odd comment that is negative or questions you know mm -hmm. people love to tell me that I'm not a biochemist because I don't work in a lab every single day. Mm. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, well, if you actually look up the definition of a biochemist, it's someone that has this type of degree in yeah. biochemistry <laughs> and works in that field now. <laughs> so yeah. I kind of am. Yeah. Um, so just like small <laughs> things like that. But to be totally honest, I find them, I find negative comments very, very amusing. And mm -hmm. I, I'm not just saying that to like, you know, distance myself from them, but the amount of time and energy, because some of the negative comments are like the longest comments, right? Mm. And it's, it's, to me, I'm just like, you are putting so much energy, energy up into being the negative. universe for me. And I mean, even if it's negative, like, mm -hmm. thanks, because you just thought about me for 40 minutes of your day. <laughs> yeah. Whether it's good or bad, like, I was part of your day. So I guess we're connected in that. Like, that's kind of how I look at it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're right. Honestly, the comment section is just, it's really fun for me to go through because people are so genuinely amazing and nice and also just have really, I find everyone's questions so interesting because for me, I have so much knowledge in this area mm -hmm. that I don't have a lot of questions to be totally yeah. honest. And then yeah. when I do, I, I figure them out pretty quick. So for me, it's very interesting to understand what like consumers that are just going into stores and trying to figure this out what their questions are because I've never had that perspective you know I've always just been making my own stuff I've never really been a traditional consumer in this space so I've never had that kind of perspective and I I just find that like the most interesting thing but yeah honestly they're they're so sweet I I love them all <laughs> yeah that's that's just that's so amazing um okay so I want to talk a little bit about your the, the skincare line did you is that something that in your videos that you talk about or promote at all so I definitely do touch on it here and there um, in the video about my background because mm -hmm. starting my company has been such a huge part of my story and why I have this type of education and knowledge. Um, I do share that. Mm -hmm. I did make one dedicated video when we did relaunch the brand just because, I mean, I actually didn't mention that I had a skincare line for probably like two and a half months on my channel because I didn't want people to think that I'm just on here to sell to products promote your channel it's mm -hmm. really not what it was about and so I was pretty nervous but people found it anyways I mean people if you go to my Instagram it's pretty obvious and so people started just finding out anyways actually within a week after the viral video um the old version of my products completely sold out within a week and I mm. kind of freaked out because I was like oh my gosh I wasn't anticipating this you were prepared of right now yeah. And now I'm out of stock. Like that's you know great for business, but really bad for my consumers. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that that was crazy too. Um, 
Yeah, so, I mean, I made one video just kind of, you know, laying it all mm -hmm. out there. I do own a skincare company. This is what it is. We just did a rebrand. Here's why. And I made one dedicated video for that. Also because the other question that was besides Shailene Woodley, the other most popular question was, what's your skincare routine? Yes. I wanted to know what products I was using. Mm -hmm. And because I only use my own products and they were not available, mm -hmm. I didn't, I couldn't like recommend them to people, which was kind of tricky. Um, um, even when I sold out, of course, I still have, you know, stock of my own yeah. product um, in my house. So I continued to use that. And I was like, I don't really know how to tell people what I'm using because I don't want to recommend something that they then couldn't even check out if they wanted to and, uh, you know, look into for themselves. So I did kind of refrain from that. So the video where I talk about my products is just called my skincare routine. Um, you know, I just go through the products that I use on a daily basis, mm -hmm. um, which is my skincare line as well. So, but so since that video, I have mentioned it a couple times, um, just kind of here and there, uh, never in a way that's like, you know, here's an ingredient and here's my product with it. It's more mm -hmm. like I was talking about, um, I did a video on fragrance and just talking about fragrance and skincare, you know, why manufacturers put it in, why it's very allergenic. It's so um, bad, I know. Yeah. For sure. Bad. So mm -hmm. I actually removed fragrance from my skincare line when we did this rebrand. Mm -hmm. um, I used to use an essential oil mixture that was very inert and safe, but I think, you know, as people that have sensitive skin, if you just see that in an ingredients list, it's something that deters you. And that was feedback that I was having from people. They're like, oh, I'd love to, you know, look, look grab your line, but uh, it has fragrance in it. And I was like, you guys are right. So yeah. I actually decided, based on, um, you know, the feedback, feedback from my subscribers, I decided to remove the fragrance from the line. Um, so I did mention it in that one. But, I mean, most of the videos that I make are not really, it doesn't, there's no reason to mention it. Mm -hmm. uh, I do keep it in the down bar just because people often do ask. So I just leave that information there, you know, how to contact me and um, the skincare line and everything. But it's not something that I didn't start the channel to sell my products, but yeah. it's just yeah. something that I, you know, I, I'll never stop selling my products. So it's just something that kind of goes, goes hand in hand sometimes. And, you know, so I have the reason why I'm so passionate about sustainability and like innovation in the skincare industry is because I've you know been able to work on really innovative, interesting products. So I do like to share kind of the science behind you know what goes into research for the purpose of you know sustainable skin skincare ingredients and stuff. And most of the examples that I do have would be from my line. So sometimes it just kind of gets in there, but. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not pushing anyone to buy any products for that matter. And people always want me to recommend specific, specific brands or specific products. Mm -hmm. That's just something I'll never do. Okay. I'll tell you my two cents if it's something I would ever try or not. I'll tell you, you know, flat out what the ingredients will do and won't do. We can talk about efficacy and safety, mm -hmm. but I'm never going to say you should go buy this product because it's going to work for you. Like I'd never give that kind of advice. So I am, you know, because I have um, a bit of a natural health product background as well with vitamins. I did do the Halo Beauty um, mm -hmm. vitamins. I just broke down the ingredients. I'm not reviewing it as a consumer that's actually tried the product, just simply breaking down the ingredients. And then from that video, um, I just mentioned the two supplements that I take, which are ingredients within her formula. Mm, okay. And yeah, that, that one, one did there. pretty good too. I mean, that got 170,000. Yeah, know. that one. I mean, you know, any of the ones that are highly searchable tend to do well with Bella the Thorne. bigger names. Mm -hmm. The Bella Thorne one did really well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but, but from that, people were like, okay, what are the two, what are the brands that you take of those products? And I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm just not going to give that information. Like, you know, I, I take what I take and you've got to figure out what you want to take. I can give you the information around those products and ingredients, but I'll never make a recommendation to someone for actual use of something. So oh, that's really? just something. No. Yeah. I mean, I, I'll give you the information, but I'm not going to tell you to use something or not use something. It's just not because I, I don't know your medical history. I don't know your current skin condition. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know what else you're using. I just can't make that kind of advice without knowing more information. So I would just rather, um, you know, provide you the information so you can make those decisions yourself. So when you do, okay, you just uploaded the Kylie skin review. So mm -hmm. you're just talking about the ingredients. You're, it's not like you're taking it, doing like a consumer review or whatever of it. It's literally just, you don't even, I'm assuming you don't even own, own any of it. Nope. You're, you're just looking at like the website or whatever and looking at the ingredients. Exactly. Yeah. So okay. what I'll do um, with those ingredient reviews, I do break down, 
you know, what I think the potential use is. If there is any special benefits, I'll definitely go over that, you know, highlight ingredients that I think are both really great and have some potential issues. And then what I like to do with um, ingredient reviews is actually let people know where, so I like to call it the 1% marker in every single ingredients list. There's a certain point where every ingredient is at a concentration of 1% and less, Mm -hmm. but you don't know what the order is. I mean, all the other ingredients above that have to be in order of concentration, Mm -hmm. but past the 1% marker, it's kind of a free for all. So that is something that I do outline on ingredients list as well, just so you can kind of know what's above 1%, what's below 1%. And I give some tips on how you can do that with your own products at home, looking at different ingredients. So, yeah, it's, it's definitely ingredient focused. You know, is there human clinical trials to back up, um, you know, the use of that for a certain ailment? Is it going to be safe for the skin? What kind of skin types is it good for? Things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I have put together some specific skincare routines from brands like The Ordinary. So if you have, you know, sensitive acne prone skin, this would be a great selection mm-hmm. of ingredients to use. I'm still not, you know, saying go buy this product. I'm saying this in- this product contains this ingredient that has been proven to proven. be beneficial for this. Mm-hmm. So you could find that ingredient in other products, absolutely. So mm-hmm. I'm still really trying not to be product specific because I'd like to just keep it about the science, keep it about, you know, the goodies on the inside of the bottle. Yeah, and it it seems like that's going pretty well. Like you're like the people that are watching your videos are very interested in really the hard facts and the science and all that behind it. Yeah, absolutely. And that's definitely a huge part of the feedback I get that, you know, there's not a lot of emotion involved in what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't have um, bias or personal opinions interjected too much. You know, I am human, so things slip in there, here and there. But Mm -hmm. it is just a very kind of objective approach to looking at if something is effective or not. Yeah. Um, And then, okay, so with that Jaclyn Hill video, I mean, it blew up and your channel is... You said like a 250,000, what is it? No, 210,000 subscribers. Yeah, yeah 210,000 subscribers since June. Um, and did you receive any type of really cool like opportunities from that video? Did Because because you have such a specific background in an education, I'm wondering if, if brands ever reached out to you, if people reached out to you, anything unusual that you received as a result of that video going viral. Oh my gosh, absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, my, you know, my email and my Instagram blows up on a daily basis. So I get everything from, uh, you know, brands that want to send me product mm-hmm. to try out. I get a lot of skincare companies wanting me to review their, um, their products, a lot of different beauty tools. Um, in addition, I have had brand owners that are reformulating something or formulating a new product that would like me to do consultation. And then even all the way to like a bunch of, um, managers of youtubers yeah 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 managers so yeah uh-huh. tons of those as well mm-hmm. i mean just kind of i think i'm the gates are open for people to just come at me right now but um i haven't taken on any opportunities as far as you know any consulting work for brands it's something i actually used to do uh mm-hmm. before i worked for this company that i'm working for now but not something that i can do at this time so those opportunities i can't really take up is it because uh, of you're already working for another company so there's a conflict of interest there or is it just yeah a there would be choice? conflict of interest okay. and i mean i have a full-time job on top of youtube mm-hmm. so i don't really have time to do consulting work anymore it's mm-hmm. something i really do enjoy doing but not uh not in this point in my life but yeah the other really interesting thing that has happened is um like speaking and in-person events Mm. so today for example I spoke at the uh, naturopathic college here in Toronto and it's the dermatologist club and they wanted me to do just an hour talk just uh, talking to the students there about my background and then some interesting kind of skincare stuff so that's been really cool Mm. Um, I have done a couple events in Toronto specifically for my brand where like most of the people there are my subscribers which is really cool and they you know we get to meet and chat and everything so the in-person stuff has been really cool as well Mm -hmm. uh those kinds of opportunities and then yeah i mean opportunities like this with you being on this podcast that's Mm -hmm. awesome and really cool too Mm -hmm. i really love um you know connecting with other people on a variety of topics both Mm -hmm. you know science business youtube so i think for me that's that's the more interesting part of things yeah, so I was going to ask you, so what are your thoughts in regards to doing sponsored sponsorships, uh, receiving products and things like that? Have you pretty much like rejected everything or are you thinking, well, okay, once I kind of figure this whole thing out, I plan on doing A, B, and C in the future? Yeah, so I'm definitely open to the idea, especially with, 
you know, brands and companies that I really support mm -hmm. their um, ideology and messaging and or it's a product that I actually use. Um, so those are more the opportunities that are attractive at this point. Um, I haven't really said flat out no um, to opportunities like that, but I'm kind of just, you know, we're still doing kind of introductory stuff and getting to know each other, getting to know what the relationship will look like mm -hmm. um, more long term. I think the more interesting things for me is, you know, the the sponsored videos that are more about like an educational platform or um, some type of way to that is really beneficial. Like I love, so for example, like the Audible ones. Like I listen to Audible every single day. Like yeah. Audible I want to sponsor me. Like that would be yeah. so. Cool. <laughs> or another one that like that I've always thought about. Like these are just examples. Yeah. Like I'm not asking for sponsorship, but yeah. Squarespace. Like I've made so many Squarespace websites. Mm -hmm. That's something I could authentically talk about. Mm -hmm. So I think it would have to be like those right fits where it's something that I've used those services. Or if I haven't, once I start using it, it's something that I couldn't live without. That's mm -hmm. the kind of sponsorship that I'd want to do because um, ultimately it'll just be a good relationship for both of us. It's something that can, you know, work authentically with the content and everything. Um, I'm definitely not opposed to it though because, I mean, YouTube does take a lot of time and effort yeah. and, you know, financial input for the things like equipment. Like I just bought, I don't even know how to use this camera. It's like a thousand dollar camera or something. Mm -hmm. Like I just shoot on like auto, like I need to figure <laughs> yeah. it out. But, you know, yeah. I am spending money on this stuff to start to get set up. Not that I know how to use the equipment effectively yeah. yet, yeah. but it is a bit of a financial, you know, injection of um, some funds there to get going. So it would kind of also uh, be interesting to, mm -hmm. to do that and yeah, offset that cost. Yeah, I would think though that doing anything like skincare related would maybe be a conflict of interest to your own brand and yeah so I mean if it is directly competing with my brand it's probably not something I'm going yeah. to do a sponsored post about yeah um, but outside of my category so I do like face and body skincare right mm -hmm. um and I don't do you know I don't do things like clay masks or sheet masks I don't do hair care stuff mm -hmm. I don't do anything makeup like cosmetic or um you know, even personal care, like let's just say deodorant and toothpaste. Yeah. I don't do those kinds of stuff. So that's something that I'd be open to. But yeah, in my main category of face and body, probably not gonna yeah. probably not gonna do someone else's brand just because I, I wouldn't be able to authentically speak to it because You're I know what I yours. use and I, I make what I use. So that's just it just for me it comes down to is this an authentic relationship? Is this something that I'm gonna feel uncomfortable or queasy or you know, I'm gonna be like dreading going into the comment section because I think someone, you know, found me out or understands yeah. that I'm, uh, you know, not being authentic there. So I would never want to have that feeling, which is why I would only want to take opportunities that feel like really, authentic. really good for both. And something that I think my subscribers would actually want to hear me talk about and tell why, you know, why we have this sponsorship, why I'm working with this company. Yeah, I think that's really important as well. Like, I, I don't want to just use products that will benefit me. I want to understand that this is being passed down to my subscribers and are they actually going to care if the answer is no then it's not going to benefit me or the brand yeah no definitely for sure all right so we're headed to the last part of the episode and it's called the uh power hour segment so it's the same question i ask everybody that comes on the show and then you just kind of answer with the first thing that comes to mind yep uh what would you say and yours is so interesting because you have such a short career on YouTube but um, <laughs> it'll be interesting to see your answers what would you say are the defining moments of your YouTube career so far so definitely that first video mm -hmm. is the most defining moment for me uh, that's kind of the catalyst for everything yeah. and then I would say honestly this fall this September when I really decided to buckle down and commit to it started posting five times a week really mm -hmm. started engaging uh, more so with my followers and subscribers I'd say that's also a defining moment because I finally kind of mentally accepted that this is what I'm doing and this is truly what I want to be doing as well. So that was also a big defining moment. Uh, awesome. What is the hardest part for you about being a YouTube influencer? So the most challenging part for me is like the actual filming and editing process because 
I live in like a one bedroom condo mm -hmm. downtown Toronto. Like it is, there's not a lot of space. There's not good backgrounds. You know, the light is really spotty. So for me, it's actually the the, the technical aspects of it. Um, I think if I had a little bit more support and a little bit more help on that side, it would make everything else easier too. Cause then I'm not stressing about, okay, well, does this look good? Um, I mean, the amount of times that I've just like lost files or the, <laughs> it wasn't even recorded or whatever, it, that kind of gets frustrating, yeah. especially when it happens a lot. And I sometimes don't feel like I'm learning, yeah. <laughs> like making the same mistakes. So for me, that really, the technical aspects is the most challenging. Connecting with people, you know, coming up with content, that is easy breezy. I mm -hmm. could do that all day. If someone else could just record and edit my videos for me, that would be You'd like, be happy. Well, maybe yeah. someday you can outsource all that. I know a lot of YouTube people, a lot of times that's like the first thing that they hire someone for. They're like, I'm just done. You know? Yeah, so. for sure. I can, I can see why for sure. Yeah. Um, if you were to get started today, what would you have done differently? I don't know, honestly, because I got started with such a fluke, like, you yeah. know, right time, right place kind of situation. I don't know what I would change. That's the thing. I think, like, your your experience so far on YouTube and your success really speaks to right time, right place, right topic. Mm -hmm. It's like yeah. there is a lot. I mean, when people say viral content or trending and all that stuff, like, the algorithm and all that, it's part of the machine, and, and part of it is – really giving people what they want to see and what they're interested in. And that topic was so hot. And like you had yeah. like the right time and you had just, you had what people were hungry for. They, they didn't want the, what, you know, whatever Jacqueline was spewing out, people wanted more facts. People wanted mm -hmm. the facts mm -hmm. and you were there providing the facts from a credible source. You know, you're a biochemist, right? Biochemist with a degree yeah. to back it up, experience to back it up. And like you said, like you didn't even have like a real thumbnail. You literally had YouTube. <laughs> I like, I just, I like it just people, it's like, you have to see this thumbnail. It's like, I can't get over it. It's like, you're kind of like, it's like mid sentence. It, yeah. <laughs> but honestly, all of them are like that until like super recently. Yeah. Like, I just started making thumbnails like maybe a month ago. Yeah. I, it's just like, I can't like, this looks yeah, like even this. That, so yeah, one month ago, I was uh -huh. still using, like, auto shots from YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, but it's, it really shows the power of a few things, like, leaning into your strengths. Like, your strengths is obviously being a biochemist. That's, that's you know, that's your superpower that makes you unique. And in, you know, talking about a trending topic, you didn't come on and talk about, oh, yeah, like, some random thing or whatever. You know, it was very specific about that topic. And so it's like... Those two things combined just create a lot of magic and you don't have to pay attention to things like, I mean, thumbnail is usually pretty important, but in your case, <laughs> yeah. I'm finding that now. That yeah. Thumbnails are really important yeah, now. Thumbnails are really Back important. Then I was just like, oh, whatever. Yeah. But it's, it, it just does show like the power. What, and what did you title? Let me see. What did you title it again? Um, so this is what people are seeing. First impressions, bio chemist but chemists but like it was just so authentic you being a biochemist saying okay guys I'm just gonna break it down for you like you know no filter these are my thoughts and I think it just it just shows that people really want that people really want that authenticity people want someone with a degree to talk about something like this to back it up and I think it's really interesting I think it's a it's a really powerful lesson that people can come away from but um yeah super interesting okay I went off on some tangent. And I realized it's Big Little Lies is the name of the show. Big oh, Little yeah, Lies yeah, with yeah. Shaylene there we Woodley. Go. Yeah, I was like, it was so bothered. I was like, it. <laughs> okay. Um, what are you most proud of when it comes to your YouTube channel? I'm not going to think about it too much. I guess I'm proud of the kind of interaction and community of people that I've built. I mean, I've gone on a lot of different, you know, YouTubers comment section, and it's not the same kind of vibe that I find on mine. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a lot of people asking questions. There's a lot of people like answering questions or directing them to some source of information. It is very focused on let's all like sit down and learn here. Let's all be friends. Um, we're all interested in these topics. And so I'm just, I guess I'm proud of kind of cultivating that type of environment for people to come to. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's not about the drama. It's not about, um, you know, your, your issues, your opinion, whatever. It's just, if you want to learn something, this is a plot, like this is a, a place that you can learn. Um, you can connect with other like-minded people that are also interested in the same topics and, you know, kind of have this community. So I guess, yeah, just kind of proud of the, the culture that is, um, surrounding my community online. 
Yeah, definitely. If you could change one thing about YouTube, what would it be? Hmm. I think that there needs to be, I think it'd be interesting to have some kind of uh, difference between when like an individual has an account and then when a business has an account, mm -hmm. like just some kind of identifier. I think would be interesting, you know, like for verified accounts, for example, we have the check mark and then you know that person is verified as that person. I think it would be interesting that, you know, if I'm a production company that makes films for a living, you know, that's doing this full time with huge budgets, mm -hmm. that the audience actually understands that, that it's not just one individual producing those. So I don't know if it's like a, if your team is over 10 or whatever, like mm -hmm. that kind of just a symbol that lets people know. Cause I think there is like such a high pressure on YouTube's to create these incredible, incredibly produced videos that are such high quality bent, but you don't really understand that there's like, you know, a team of 15 people behind that YouTuber that are actually creating and orchestrating mm -hmm. this magic. Mm -hmm. I think it would just be kind of interesting to have a bit more transparency of like, okay, this is an individual, this is more of a corporation, just kind of like, so in my industry we have, there's events that are, you know, this is corporation owned only um, companies that, you know, no one owns more than 30%, there's no individual, for example, mm -hmm. versus um, like indie brands where it, the individual has to own like 80% or more of that brand. So I think it'd just be kind of an interesting thing to move. Not that we need it right now, but I do see YouTube going in a way that is just very highly produced, produced. in a very uh -huh. technical way. Mm -hmm. And I think it would just be interesting to have some type of separation of like, you know, maybe it's like amateur YouTube versus pro YouTube yeah. or, or whatever that looks like. I just think, I don't know. I think it's something that I've kind of thought about, but I, I think YouTube's pretty great as is. It is yeah. a very interesting platform that has really shaped the landscape of, you know, online uh, influencers and, mm -hmm. and business and everything. It's such an interesting platform. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, what is, what has been the biggest mistake you've made on your YouTube channel so far? I think the biggest mistake that I made was just thinking that I could, you know, get away with, um, continuing to do what I was doing when it, when it first all worked out. Right. So, you know, I was, filming videos just on my iPhone, bad audio, like you said, you know, like thumbnails, no thumbnails, auto thumbnails. Um, I wasn't really thinking about titles too much. I was more titling them with my science brain versus a what are people searching brain. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that is something that I definitely learned a lot from because I did see my channel actually um, losing followers around the end of August, beginning mm -hmm. of September because I really wasn't putting, you know, those extra steps in to make great content. That is something that people definitely want to click on when they first see it. So I do kind of regret not taking it seriously from the get go and really mm -hmm. building that momentum up from the beginning. But I think it's also okay that, you know, I, I had to take my time to kind of figure that out. And now I'm, I'm committed to doing things in a better way. Yeah, definitely. Um, what is the best decision you made about your channel? I think the best decision that I made was to kind of stop being afraid of um, judgment or if I was putting out the right content or just kind of that, that questioning process. Once I let that go, then I really started to create videos that ended up doing a lot better because they actually were kind of those harder answer, harder to answer questions. Sometimes I, I was trying to tiptoe around some subjects because I didn't know how to approach it. But when I let go of that fear, uh, that was probably the best thing I could do and just, you know, speak from the from the truth of science. And um, I think the other really good thing that I did was just being more consistent, you know, being on there um, weekly and then also uh, upping the engagement. Something that freaked me out also in the beginning is all the comments, because if I replied to one, I'd feel like I had to reply to I all. Know. And just kind of this like anxiety around like, you know, what, why do I reply to this one, but not this one? Like, yeah. I would just overthink it. So now I'm the best thing I think I've done is just kind of let go of that. And you know, I'm doing what I can, I'm putting out the content that I want to put out. And I'm not trying to take too many opinions at once. Mm -hmm. That's good. Where do you see yourself and your YouTube channel in five years? Or three years? Uh, things go so fast here. So three years. True. Um, 
I definitely want to still be on YouTube. Um, I hope that I actually can have more of a team to help me do this. I think I have so many ideas for some really interesting science videos, but they're really technical mm -hmm. and I wouldn't want to do them right now because I don't feel like I have the technical abilities and tools to do it and produce it in the right way. Um, so I'd love to build that team out uh, to do more things like, you know, experiments, what happens if you put this product in this situation and mm -hmm. kind of make it a lot more fun mm -hmm. to show you, like to show everybody the behind the scenes. Um, I also would like to do more of like on-site stuff, actually showing what does a production floor look like. But again, so it requires building up that team. Um, as far as me personally in five years, I definitely see myself, you know, still in this um, in this role that I'm in right now with the company that I have. Um, I'm always expanding product lines and working on new brands and product lines, mm -hmm. which is really exciting. So hopefully uh, see those come to fruition. I do have some exciting partnerships in the works as far as brands mm -hmm. with other influencers. So I, I can't really mention too much, but that is exciting for me as well. Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely just... I, I just kind of started my career, I just got out of school, um, so probably just going to be on a very similar path for the next five years, but definitely want to build out that team to create way more interesting content than I'm able to just do on my own. Awesome. Last question, what is your YouTube superpower, meaning what it is about you that comes very naturally that has contributed to your success on YouTube? Um, I guess my superpower is just my understanding and experience in an industry that people normally don't have access to. Mm -hmm. um, it's not very common for people in my industry to be so open about um, both the science, but also the manufacturing, you know, the supply side of things, even, you know, different types of packaging and what really goes into that. There isn't a lot of people in my space that are online talking about that. So I think I do have kind of a, a unique um, window to share that with people. And um, yeah, people also just kind of seem to be drawn to the way that I do deliver information, which is very unbiased and just mm -hmm. kind of matter of fact. Um, so I think both of those things contribute to my superpower, I guess. <laughs> Definitely. I, I would have to agree. Well, Kenna, thank you so, so much for being on the show. I'm super excited because we're going to be doing a, a giveaway uh, with your skincare line. So we'll, we'll have all the details for that. But um, why don't you let everybody know where they can find you? Because I'm sure now after listening to you for an hour, they're like, I got to go check her. I got to check out her channel. And her skin yeah, for sure. <laughs> so you can find me on YouTube if you just type in Kenna. I am the first channel to come up. Okay. Um, and then you can find me on Instagram at Kenna Whitnell. So that's Kenna and then W H I T N E L L. Same thing on Twitter. Um, mostly active on Instagram though, so you can definitely find me there. Send me a DM. Um, yeah, and then my skincare line is called Altillus Beauty, so you can find us on Instagram or that's our website as well. It's just altillusbeauty.com, and yeah. That's awesome. And uh, make sure that you leave a comment below. Let us know what you thought about this discussion, about Kenna's kind of rise here on YouTube, and any questions or anything at all, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much, Kenna. This was such a pleasure getting to know you, chatting with you about your meteoric rise on YouTube. I mean, it's truly fascinating. So thank you for the time. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure as well. Oh, bye.